Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station. Mr. Conductor, as superintendent of the Indian Valley Railroad, I order you to appear. Please. Hello, Mr. King. Ah, Miss Jones, there you are. Yes, indeed, I uh, was just checking for mice. Oh. No mice, that's good. <laughs> I came by to tell you, Miss Jones, that the Sunset Flyer has been rerouted and will not arrive in Indian Valley until tomorrow. Oh. But I wanted to stop by and make sure that this station was ship shape. <laughs> or train shape, as the case may be, when it gets here. You can count on us, Mr. King. Tip top, excellent. Perdón, <laughs> Senor King. No, no, excuse me, Mr. Perez. Hiya, Felix. Hello, Mr. Perez. Buenos dias, Senor Perez. Buenos dias, everyone. Uh, are there any passengers wishing to go into town? None so far today, Felix. There was no one special who got off the Sunset Flyer. Oh, no, no, it's been delayed until tomorrow. Ay, Dios mío. Are you expecting someone? See, si. see si, an actor. Someone who will add just the right touch of realism to a scene in my new play. And Stacy, yes. is Felix a bus driver or an actor? Oh, he is a bus driver, and he's an actor, and he's a director, too. Stacy, why will you never come audition for one of my plays? Oh, let's not get into that again, Felix. What do you think, Dan? Kara? The Shining Time Stars Community Theater presents... Stacy Jones and Felix Perez in Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Unto the white, upturned wandering eyes of mortals who fall back to gaze on him as he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name and what am I doing? Oh, Felix, no. The answer is no. I'm working at the station now. I don't have any time for acting anymore. <laughs> Isn't she a wonderful Juliet? Aren't I a wonderful Romeo? Felix, my friend, if it's true acting talent you're looking for, look no further. Schemer was born to play Romeo. Some horseradish, some horseradish. My kingdom for some horseradish. Hey, that ain't chopped liver. That's from a different play, Schemer. A play, Schmay, to be or not to be. You get the idea. So when do I start and how much do I get? Now listen, no. Seriously, I'm going to need my own dressing room and a personal assistant to take care of all my personal needs. Uh, excuse me, uh, Felix. <laughs> I just ran out of wood polish. Can you drive me into town? Perez Pronto Post Company is at your service, Senorita Jones. Or uh, should I say Juliet? Oh, uh, Billy. Billy, I'm going into town. Yeah, just, just for a few minutes. Okay, kids, listen. I want you to stay here with Billy, and if the phone rings, I want you to answer it, okay? I'll be right back. Come on. Okay, but, but, but wait, I would, we would just... I wonder if it's any fun acting in a play. It must be, but Stacy says it's hard work, too. She used to be an actress, you know. How could it be hard? It's just pretending, isn't it? Hey, look, here comes your friend Becky. I know. Let's pretend we have real jobs here and see if she believes us. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's really nice out. Want to come to the park? Hi, Becky. What can I do for you, young lady? Say what? Harold, what's with him? He's been under a lot of pressure. Being assistant manager of the station and all. Dan, the assistant manager of the station? I am so sure. 
Don't make me laugh, Kara. Hey, that's no way to talk to the assistant engineer. As <laughs> if. You're kidding, right? Who's kidding? Well, that's okay. I was passing by my way to see my friends anyway. My other friends. All of them. Okay, Becky, see ya. Yeah, later, Becky. We're having a party. A really big party. Tonight, me and all my friends. There'll be lots of games and treats, too. I don't know how I'm gonna have room for them all. My place is kind of small, and we'll need a lot of space. Well, why don't you have the party right here in the station? I'd never get permission. You have my permission. Me, the assistant manager. Well, that's really nice of you guys. I guess. You're having time to station, Dan Jones speaking. Can I help you? Yes, Mr. Kent. No, you don't know. I'm the new assistant manager. The Sunset Flower is back on schedule after all. It'll be here this afternoon. Yes, sir, I'll tell them. You're welcome. You guys really do work here, don't you? Well, I'll um, have to get back to you about the party. Thanks for offering. Um, I'd better go and start the um, invitations. See you later. Bye. Oh, boy. What are we going to do now? Becky thinks we really have jobs here, and she thinks she has permission to have a big party here tonight. Maybe, maybe she'll forget. She might forget, but I won't forget. <sighs> Mr. Assistant Manager and Miss Assistant Engineer. Hmm? That's right, I am Schemer, and you are the Assistant Engineer, and you, sir, are the Assistant Station Manager? I can't tell the two of you what a privilege it is to meet the both of you. You're only playing, Schemer. Uh -huh. You're acting. Oh. You know, uh -huh. like in a play. Mm uh hmm. -huh. Please don't tell him the Schemer will do anything. Anything? <laughs> Thank you. Well, while we're on the subject of assistance, I always felt that I needed, or should I say deserved, an assistant or two. Sort of like, uh, Schemer's little helpers. Who are your helpers? You won't tell them this, right? You're catching on, Danny boy. You're catching on. <laughs> Let's start by hardworking assistants by first, polishing the machines, and second, dusting my shoes. <laughs> if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a liar. Well, same here, partner. Why, I've never told a lie myself. Hold on, hold on. Now, that's a lie right there. What's a lie? That you never told a lie. I heard you tell plenty of lies. Why, you mangy prairie dog. Cool it, cool it. I have an idea. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why don't you two go and lie down, eh? <laughs> Well, in exactly 10 minutes' time, I'm going sailing in the regatta on Swan Lake. Meanwhile, are you two so busy you haven't time for a story? Is Schemer around? Don't see him anywhere. Good. I think this story will be of particular interest to you. It's a story about, well, telling stories. <laughs> Oh, he's fine. He only worked out of Edward Station for a little while. So Topham Hatt never believed Diesel's lies. And Duck came home before too long, so all was well in the end. There's a big difference between telling lies about other people to get them into trouble and just, you know, pretending. Right, pretending. Maybe, but getting Becky to believe you have real jobs here at the station has gotten you into trouble, hasn't it? But isn't there some magic you could do to make the lie go away? Not this time, Kara. Lies can't be magicked away, but there is a magic trick you could do, and it begins working when you both tell Billy and Stacy the truth. Now, to the regatta. Anchors away. I say, Daniel, the floor could use a jolly good muffin. Get to it right now, will you? Pip, pip, pop, pop, and all that. Yes. Uh, Kara, I 
am in the mood for some music. Um, be it love and play the jukebox for me, will you? And all I have is one nickel. Well, that's all it takes is one nickel. <laughs> this is a life, isn't it, Daniel? Yes. <laughs> No, I didn't. I never got my boat into the water. The swans all chased me away. They said it was a swans only race. Say, have you talked to Billy and Stacy yet? No, not yet. Schemer, could you roll over, please? Well, they'll find out anyway, just like what happened to James. Who's James? Surely you remember James. He's a bright red engine. He thinks he's the best and brightest on the island of Sodor. Let me explain. James is a mixed traffic engine. He can pull both freight cars and coaches. He's proud of his smart red paint, and so is his driver. Everyone says you brighten up their day, James. One morning, James whistled loudly at the other engines. Look at me. I am the smartest, most useful engine on the line. Rubbish replied Thomas. We're all useful. Sir Topham Hatt says so, and he's head of the whole railway. You know what, James? added Percy. What? replied James. You're getting all puffed up. James huffed away. Later, he was still boasting. I'm the pride of the line. I saw you pulling freight cars, snorted Gordon. You're only a goods engine. I pull coaches, too. Not as much as I do. But Sir Topham Hatt has plans for me. James was only making this up, but Gordon believed him. What plans? Uh, wait and see. Oh, dear, he thought. Now what'll I do? Thomas was shunting shining new coaches. Good morning, James. Are those coaches for me? Asked James, hopefully. No, these are for Gordon's Express. I'll fetch your freight cars next. But James was going to play a trick on the other engines. Actually, Thomas, I'm taking the coaches. Sir Topham had asked me to tell you. What about the cars? Asked Thomas. Uh, give them to Gordon. Come on, Thomas, said his driver. Orders are orders. So when James's driver returned, James was coupled to the coaches and he puffed away.
Thomas returned with the freight cars. And a few minutes later, Gordon arrived. Where's the express? Thomas told him about James. And so here are your cars. Gordon was very cross, and so was his driver. Wait till Sir Topham Hatt hears about this. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan! What a clever plan! He chuffed. Then he saw Sir Topham Hatt. Some jokes are funny, but not this one, James. You have caused confusion. Yes, sir, said James. You will now stay in your shed until you are wanted. The other engines teased James. I wonder who'll be pulling the express today, said Gordon. I expect it'll be you, replied Henry. James is stuck in the shed for being silly. James felt sad. Next morning, he went back to work. Hello, whistled Thomas. Good to see you out and about again. I'm sorry I tricked you, said James. Are these my cars? Yes, replied Thomas kindly. They are pleased to have you back. James set off to the harbor with his train of freight cars. He bustled about all day, pushing and pulling them into place. Time to go home now, James, said his driver at last. No cars or passengers, just we two. But his driver was wrong. Excuse me, called a man. I have a meeting with Sir Topham Hatt, and I mustn't be late. May I ride back with you? Of course, replied James's driver. Then he whispered to James, This gentleman is a railway inspector. James was most impressed. He steamed along the line as smoothly and quickly as he could. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting on the platform, and the railway inspector greeted him warmly. This clever engine gave me a splendid ride. You must be proud of him. Yes, indeed. Once again, you are a really useful engine. So you see, everything worked out for James. And it can work out for you to... 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 <laughs> Miss Jones, yes. Mr. Two Feathers, I hope I'm not too late. I haven't missed you, have I? Missed what, Mr. King? The Sunset Flyer is in India. yet. Have any famous people arrived? Sorry, Mr. King. Sunset Flyer's not arriving until tomorrow. You told us yourself. Not two hours ago, I left a message with your new assistant station manager, Mr. Dan Jones. Assistant station manager? Dan Jones? This fella here is Dan Jones. You're the assistant station manager? Dan, Kara, what is this all about? Well, Aunt Stacy, you see, Carol and I were playing a game, and we were pretending we had real jobs here, then Becky came in. Now, who in the name of diesel fuel is Becky? Uh, Mr. King, uh, no harm done, really. I mean, everything is all right. Everything is under control. <laughs> You call that being under control? What, may I ask, is the meaning of this? Uh, do be a love and scratch my foot, won't you? Ah, uh, hello, J.B. Uh... Ah, Mr. J.B. King, Esquire. Ah, uh, exalted head. Ah, uh, the meaning of this, yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. The meaning of this is that it is a managerial retreat. Yes, it's uh, especially restful for important business type people like yourself and I. Put a sock in it, schemer! Miss Jones! Yes, Mr. King? The only thing under control in this station is my temper. We were just pretending, like in the play Felix puts on. Oh, Ben, you have to understand there's a big difference between acting on stage and pretending in real life. I just wanted Becky to think I was your assistant. Oh, does she? Yeah, I told her she could have a big party here at the station. Well, you're going to have to tell her the party is off. I know. Boy, she's going to really hate us. Oh, no, no, no. She won't hate you. No, 
I think she likes you and Kara because you're you're a friend. You know, not because you have big important jobs at the station. I'm sorry, Aunt Stacy. You know what your problem is, Danny boy? You know what? You're too good an actor. I was gonna tell you, Billy, that I wanted to work it out myself like a real grown-up engineer would. Hmm. What a real grown-up engineer would do when he's in trouble, or she's in trouble, is tell the truth and ask for help, and fast. I remember one time I went out one cold, bitter winter night to throw the switch for the Highball Express. But I couldn't. It was stuck, frozen. And I wired head office, and they told me the engineers were having trouble all up the line. It wasn't just me. They told me to stack some hot coals around the switch and thaw it out. And I could hear the, the thunder of the Highball Express rolling through the valley. I knew it didn't have much time. But those red hot coals, they worked like a charm, and just in time, too, because that highball express came rolling around that bend and rolled right on through here, right on schedule. So you see, if I hadn't asked for help, there'd have been an accident. Wow. Speaking of schedules, shouldn't my system engineer be getting home for dinner? Thanks, Philly. But I'm not really having a party. I just said that about all my friends because, well, I just came over to play with you guys and you had these jobs and everything. Becky, we don't have those jobs. It's true. We were just pretending. Sorry, Becky. We were just acting, you know. Well, I believed you. And we believed you. But the party, I mean. Listen, Sunset Flyer. So, was the actor I was expecting arrive on the train today? Uh, he's talking about my co-star. Oh. It's a part that I was born to play. Uh, tell me about my character again. Well, your character's name is McDonald. McDonald. And uh, he has a farm. I got a farm. Uh, your co-star's here. Let me go get her. Oh, good. Oh, who are those flowers for, Mr. King? Well, as superintendent of the Indian Valley Railroad, I felt it was my official duty to welcome our famous visitor. Oh, that's great. Mr. Steven, meet your co-star. <laughs> well, I must say she presents a uh, splendid profile. I like that in a performing pig. Felix, could you be in one of your plays? That would be excellent. But it takes talent, you know. You have to be able to convince your audience you are what you're pretending to be. Oh, I think we're all pretty good at that. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to play the part of a farmer named McDonald, and you're going to play the part of a pig. You think you can handle that? All right. I'll start. E-I-E-I-O. Come on, work with me now. Reach for the speed. Reach for the whistle. Go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see, so far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, Hopes to hold on to, who knows how far you'll go. To a shining. 